There we go. We are recording here as well. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that'd be quite good. That'd be quite good. Okay. So, we'll give people a little bit just to get into the stream here. I'm just going to get my microphone set up properly. There we go. Yep, we'll not be long now. Now, it's going to be an interesting one. I mean, unfortunately, we did lose a submarine um, as of last turn due to just mines. I mean, this is the thing. It's like, um, it's, just, it's our chance. And this is it. We're not always aware of where mines might be. But uh, we'll just avoid Brisbane. We're going to be making our inroads towards Auckland this turn with our submarines, ideally. We will see our destroy minesweepers and the destroyer, uh, Amigiri. She's going to be making her way down south towards Raoul Island this turn as well. And so it's going to be interesting. I do wonder what he might make to pick it up the destroyer moving down that way. But we'll go ahead and take a look at that then. So I do hope you guys are ready. We'll go ahead and take a look at the name of the save here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Something wicked this way detects. Hmm. <laughs> now, and this is it. I don't know whether he's referring to the Kidapatai here. Now, he will have been aware of aircraft in the area. He, we did see, obviously, the reports of aircraft, so he will he will be aware of aircraft in that area, as we discussed last time. The question is going to come down to, like, is he going to potentially mistake them for something else? Ideally, ideally. But we'll go ahead and see what the results are. It's not like anything can really uh, challenge the Kidapatai. And if he, well, we know he doesn't have detection over the Kidapatai. This one of these things. It's, it's not as easy to fight them if you don't know where they are. But we'll go ahead and take a look at this as we go forth for the Empire. School girl noises. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, so warm today. Okay, we occupy. Okay, so he's retaken Zamboanga. That's absolutely fine. The thing is, obviously, we did uh, head in there and destroy that force, but that's, that's absolutely fine. I mean, obviously, we don't have any Japanese forces there. They're all like a guy in. Well, the vast majority of them are like a guy in. Okay. So we are reacting to the submarines over here then. So it does look like he's changed uh, the patrol location. Looks like he's got a submarine over there by Talagi. <laughs> ah. Japanese task force avoid and riot types of evade combat. Right, so we do manage to escape there. So that's unfortunate. It looks like he sent out some uh, patrol boats over here then. Okay, so he's going to be aware that this is obviously one part of the Kidabutai. But, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's one of these things then. So he must have been aware of them somehow. It must have been through the actual detection. But we can see that there's actually ships over here, ships over here then. Uh, but obviously no no uh, engagement here. And we do have a fair escort with the, well, the uh, half of the Kidabutai. But uh, this might seem bad that they've been detected. He'll know exactly where they are. But if he doesn't know where the other ones are, that's going to be a concern for him. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, looks like plenty of ships up around that area. Now, ideally, the other half of the Kidapa's eye will get into action. But it's going to be an interesting one. I suppose we might have straight a little bit too near there. But this is the issue. It's like, um, he's very, very suicidal with his ships there. Which, yeah. It, it's difficult to deal with. Right, okay. So, Cuttle Fish over there. She does miss the patrol boat Nikamaru. Now, I believe the Nikai Maru, sorry, is carrying some supply, perhaps. Or she might have already been present. But even so, we know that there's obviously submarines there now. Okay. So he's going to be aware of one half of the Kidapatai. That's fine. The thing is, we're not going to be staying in the Coral Sea long anyhow. Now, ideally, we will see archery strikes from the Kidapatai. Obviously, we'd like to sink some ships in the area and then move on. Right, grailing over here. She's uh, been detected by the destroyer Hayati. Okay. Let's try and cause some damage here. Yeah, okay. Now, this is an issue, is obviously the fact that our uh, death charges are really exploding above the correct depth. I mean, this is the issue that we're going to find out here in the deep oceans. Obviously, in the shallow oceans, while well, the shallow, uh, shallow areas of sea, it's easier to deal with. Right, I one uh, sorry, I twenty six, uh, destroyer minesweeper Montgomery, I do believe. Oh my God! Okay, I'm gonna say that looked pretty bad, man. 
She doesn't sound like she's sung, but that was very uh, lucky for him there. Yeah, his luck has definitely increased when it comes to combat and our submarines. That is a shame. Okay, allied ships there. So it does look like there's a number of uh, ships around this area. We should be able to pick up on them. Yeah, we're spotting tankers over here then, so let's hope that we can actually get some hits. Right, there's a lot of shipping around there. Shipping there, shipping there by Johnson that we're aware of. I need to see some strikes by the Kitabatai. Yeah, yeah. I'm not intending to keep them very long anyway. I was hoping I could pick up the uh, heavy cruiser, but they're going to be falling back as we discussed in the earlier stream, sorry. Normally that looks pretty good when it comes to like deep oceans, but I suppose this is the quality of the American depth charges really in the HW training. Okay. So I'd love to know how much of an impact this might be having on the supply situation. The thing is, it's like I have no idea what the supplies are like for him as of this moment. But it would be interesting to know. I'd like to think it's actually making a profound difference. I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, so we do cause eight allied casualties there as well. Uh, 22 hits on the runway. Though no supply base hits, but we should have more aircraft coming in here. Yep. Uh, nine runway hits. I wonder if we've actually destroyed the base as such. Yeah, it looks like no uh, air base supply, but I mean, this is obviously a lot more bombers than normal. Another eight casualties there. Ah, there we go. Airbase supply hits again. There we go. We might be able to destroy the um, airfield as such this turn, perhaps. We'll see about that one. It depends really on the coordination. I don't think that was all of the actual flights there. Right, so it's hitting Canton. Interesting breakthrough. Yep, our flak is actually doing some good work. Yeah, I mean, this is it. He's coming in very low here. Okay, so it's going for a ground pound mission here. Okay, so we are, Well, he does absolutely... Air attack. What was he attempting to do there? I mean, that is a... Uh, so that's at 10,000 feet there. No, no losses at all, actually. Interesting. Uh, we don't obviously do anything to them. But we do get to see, obviously, he's got one of the uh, flying tiger aircraft over here. Uh, we have some buffaloes. The Hurricane 2B Trops. I'm going to see Tropical. Now, we've not met this aircraft before, so we're aware now that he has Hurricanes. Uh, runaways, obviously, we're aware of P-40s, we've been aware for a while. But the Hurricane's a new aircraft. That'll be an interesting one to take into consideration. But the thing is, as far as it goes now, we can and will overwhelm him when it comes to Singapore. The good news is we can see that it looks as if he's moved bombers, perhaps, to Singapore, or they might be coming from elsewhere. I just saw some ships over there by Rangoon, just the uh, west of Rangoon, actually. Come on, I want to see some uh, bombers from the Kitabatai. We see plenty of targets, so don't don't give me any rubbish. Come on, let's see them. It's a target-rich environment, after all. Come on, let's go. Please. Hello there, Chrome. How you doing there, my friend? Come on, show me some airstrikes, please. I want to see some airstrikes from Kitabatai. It looks like we are causing damage, but obviously we want to actually sink something, so... I'm hoping that we'll see an actual airstrike. Um, so far, not too terribly much. We're still getting going, really, as such. Uh, we did have two, um, Australian corvettes intercept the Kidiputai, but obviously no battle was joined. Uh, the Kidiputai withdrew at night. That might potentially put off the rank there, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't think it would. Ah, oh, here we go, finally. But well, that's good, then. I'm glad that's actually going ahead. Right, so that is the Corvette. There we go. But this is good. This is obviously destroying ships. That will be uh, irritating otherwise. So good practice for the Kita tie. Let's hope that we can actually hit some of these tankers in the area that we seem to be aware of. Hello! There we go. We actually have an oiler over here. The Picos. Now that, right, fuel cargo burning. There we go. That's what we like to see here. Come on, let's take her out. Yep, deck penetration. Fuel cargo burning. Banzai screams the pilots as they dive towards the sea. There we go, yep, that's looking pretty solid there. 
I mean, ideally we can hit some more ships. I mean, these ships around Townsville. Uh, Townsville, yep. Yeah, she's gone down. That's what we wanted to see. Oh, how are you doing there, military history, once again? Yeah, I mean, this is it. The strike animation is fantastic. But okay, so we hit the course over here. I mean, this is the thing. The Allies don't exactly have much in the way of uh, tankers nor oilers, especially oilers, so this is very handy. We do obviously have the actual ships around Townsville over here. We do support the ships around uh, Carnes, I think it is. Kangs, Carnes, whatever you want to call it. We do still have the other element of the Kitabatai. So we have the free carriers over here. We do have another free carriers here. We've not seen the two light cruisers as of yet. So let's see. Yep, here we go. Another strike on Townsville. Let's see how this goes. Right, so we do see the destroyer minesweeper, I do believe. And here we go. The uh, tanker. Come on, let's get to hit some that. Need to see some hits. British motorist, very interesting name there. But this is another big hit there. He's not going to be able to ignore nor shrug this one off as such. It's going to cause him some damage. The beauty is, we don't know where this fuel might have come from, but it probably would have been from the Dutch East Indies. So this is actually hitting it at, uh, yeah, hitting the source really. He can't move that fuel without these tankers, so this is going to hurt. Excellent so far. I'd like a hit on the AM there, that'd be nice. But we've hit the motorist, so I don't think she's going to be... She's either going to be severely damaged... Oh, we've not seen any B5N2Ks as of yet. Right, here we go, speak of the devil, and he shall arrive. Very good there, two hits, yep. Very nice. Ideally we'd be able to score further hits, but this is what we've been looking forward to all this time. Motorist hit again. I mean, MHV is really quite right here. The animations really are spectacular. We'll actually see the deliberate attack at uh, Numea today as well, which is going to be very, very exciting. We didn't know what the uh, fortification value of the base was, so we'll see. Yeah, she's not going to be making out of this. But this is so far an oiler, heavily damaged, if not critically. We haven't heard her sink, but I don't think she's going to be long for this world. Yep, the motorist has gone down there. Superb effort by the pilots of the Kidabatai. Yet she was hit 14 times there. Perhaps we might see another strike, but that is very good there. I mean, that's value. I think it was the right decision to head north. It looks like that might be the end of the land, well, sort of the air phase there. We've still not yet spotted something just sank there. That could be the oiler. Possibly. Now we're going to move into the land phase here. Let's hope that our men are victorious at, uh, well, at Dumaia. Let's hope for the best. We're not expecting victory. I mean, we did anticipate about a week, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, the bombardment to Changsha. I can't tell if he's reinforced. He's definitely reinforced. But it's hard to know when he's reinforced again, so we need to take a note of the numbers. Uh, but Changsha is really going to be our... Oh, hello. Okay, so with the actual Chinese force over here, what was it, about 90,000 men, something in that sort of region? We can see that it's actually moving here. We expected it, well, I expected him to head over here to cross the river. I think having blooded the division over here, I think that's probably uh, gave him a little bit too much confidence. So the thing is, I'm willing to somewhat sacrifice that division, perhaps to lure this Chinese force in, because that allows me to actually concentrate my forces, and we could, with artillery and the 104th, potentially reinforced by some other measure. Uh, we will have our bombers moving over here to hang out shortly as well. We could bloody and destroy this force. I'd much, much rather fight this force over here than fight it across the river. So I think in all honesty, depending on what his moves are here, if he's indeed heading up the road towards Changsha, he might be thinking that he could cut us off, but that's not going to happen. It's going to take him too long. We have too many men here to, uh, yeah. Not to mention the thousands of reinforcements that are going to be piling down this road over here, this rail network. I think this is going to be a superb blunder, really. I think this is going to be one of his big blunders, because that is going to be a large Chinese force destroyed. And, yeah, it's not going to be reinforced in these cities. Okay, so for all that bombardment, we only caused 20 casualties, but bear in mind, we're using 145 guns here. Now, what we're doing here, our tactic at Changsha, is that we're only using the actual like, field artillery regiments. The reason for that is, as you can see over here, it has 110,187 troops, so it doesn't look as if it's reinforced. 539 guns. So, what I'm doing here is I'm hoping to, uh, well, increase the expenditure of supply here at Changsha. 
we will, and I imagine we should be able to drive his supply usage just through the roof, because they're technically going to be counted as in combat, I do believe. So yeah, each turn of combat, I think the usage of supplies in combat is just, I don't know, it's dramatically, dramatically higher. And here we go, with a little bit of attack at the new mayor. Right, now we're going to hope for the best. I think we're going to be blooded here. I don't think we'll take the, uh, take the base, but I'm hoping for the best. I think the 8th tank regiment might make the difference, but we'll see here. Okay, the naval guard. We do have artillery as well, so... I don't know. I don't know what to think. I don't know if we'll take it, but I'd, I'd like to believe we might have a chance. It is going to be interesting to see how the tanks factor into this. We do have a decent number of them. Okay. Looks like the Pioneer's been knocked out. The 8th tank regiment is attacking there. Uh, the Australian AA regiment's been knocked out. 4th infantry, infantry regiment attacking. The 39th's taken a blow there. They may surrender if we're very, very lucky. I don't I don't know. I really don't know how the attack might go. Uh, the 144th is still strong. The 4th has taken a beat in there at night one, but they're still strong enough. Let's see. The 4th Australian, they might hold. I think they're going to hold. But this is actually very encouraging. Those numbers have collapsed there. Our strength is actually pretty good so far. Um, it's going to be interesting to gather the information here. 249, 193, yep, yeah, okay. So, Numea stands against the blow here. We did expect that, so it looks as if he was at level 3, yeah, that makes sense. So, Defender, Terrain, Force, Preparation, Experience, okay. Uh, so 743 casualties there for 492 allied casualties. Now, the thing is, I can take these casualties, and the beauty is, none of these were actually destroyed. Now, granted, losses here were actually really quite intriguing. Uh, 61 disabled, it, it pro predominantly disabled. <laughs> what losses? Small screen, yeah, pretty much. Uh, right, okay, so 734 Japanese casualties, uh, 61 squads disabled, 3 non-combatant squads disabled, 1 engineer squad disabled, 492 allied casualties, 1 squad destroyed, 91 disabled, 13 disabled for the non-combatants, and 1 engineer squad destroyed, and 5 disabled. Now the good news is here, yeah, as for notes there, I was just about to touch on that, well no tank losses. That's actually a big deal. I mean, that is actually quite a big deal here. I mean, the fact is, it's like, it looks like we got blooded quite badly there. But the fact is, I've got two infantry regiments, two naval guard forces, not full naval guard forces. I don't think entirely full uh, infantry regiments. But these numbers are spread out far more. If we take a little look over here, then. So we have 12,153 troops here, 211 guns, 166 vehicles, 166. He has 5,680 troops over here, 73 guns, 16 vehicles. So we didn't knock out any vehicles of his own, but they might be support vehicles. We didn't knock out any guns. But the fact is we've reduced the fortifications. So what we might do then is potentially, we'll take a look at the state of the men here. We'll see what their result, uh, what their result in strength is after the battle. We might choose to go ahead with another deliberate attack, but we might just have a, a few days of bombardment. Basically, I will have supply coming to me. Uh, we'll see what happens. But we haven't seen low supplies. So it's an interesting one. We don't know what his uh, supply situation is like over here. Uh, no NTHG. I can imagine it's probably built it up at New Mayor. But we are going to have to see about that. Uh, those units shouldn't have many AT guns. I mean, ideally. Ideally. Okay, bombardment of Wenkau once again. So this one's been a long, long and slow burn in conflict over here. But it will eventually crack. I think the results that I knew were very good. I think it's one of these things, it's like, um, he may be emboldened by the amount of casualties we've taken. Uh, but the fact is, we do have far more men to actually take those casualties with. The important thing here as well is the fact that uh, only uh, barely... I don't think we actually lost anything as such, it's just it was disabled, which is a very... Uh, I mean, to say that we're going up against, like, a, uh, I think it's, like, Jungle, Jungle Hex? I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, and level 3 fortifications, that's really encouraging. I think, had that been, like, clear terrain, or even lesser fortifications, we would have taken that in the first attempt there. But his men are probably going to be tired. I don't think they're going to last long. Numea's time is truly numbered here. Okay, so we can see that we inflict 10 casualties over here, one squad destroyed. I mean, this is encouraging. Even the small amount of uh, bombardment, we are destroying forces. We know there's a Chinese force here. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's moving there. I do have reinforcements moving to Wenkao as well. So we will crack the city. Once Wenkao is actually finally cracked, I can actually have these forces uh, rest for a while, basically refit. Well, I'm going to gain the industry of Wenkao, which could be very nice. Okay, there we go. So, nice turn, really. 
Nice turn. Luyang's fortifications expanded. I know it's a clear terrain, but I'd rather have some fortifications there, just because I don't want to be uh, taken advantage of by Chinese, well, massed Chinese forces. And those Australian forces reinforcing the Umeo troops likely came for supplies, yeah. Well, I suppose this is it. Like, he did move some forces into uh, New Caledonia. We did see troops and, well, transports moving, so that would make sense. Uh, we did sink a few of them, actually, which was very, very nice there. Yep, okay, so the destroyer there is going to begin her upgrades. Very good, okay. That's what we want to see there. That's what we want to see. Okay. But, uh, he knows about one half of the Kidapatai. But the fact is, we've probably sank a oiler. We've definitely sank a tanker. Uh, we sank some patrol boats as well, so that's very good. There's a lot of ships in that area, so we'll see what arrives. Oh, the 24th uh, Sentai has arrived. 50th Sentai has arrived. Uh, I believe those would be forces I'm moving over from potentially um, Sarawak, perhaps. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the state of the men first. Oh yeah, yeah, we're looking pretty good here. Pretty good. What we might do then is, uh, I think, yeah, look at that table equipment. 91, 98, 100, 100, 88, 100, 82, 81, 95. Looking pretty good there, actually. Uh, we do have a little bit of fatigue and disruption, so we'll make, uh, we'll decide upon that one. I mean, as you can see here, we have more supplies than we actually, yeah, we're, we're good on supplies. And let's see, so Lafoa, there's supply there, yeah, so it looks like it's been drained from there. Comac, uh, 1356. Obviously, we do have supply and load in over here. That's good. Uh, lose any planes. We'll take a look. So, aircraft losses. Today. Um, we lose an F1M2 Pete over here on operational. But, uh, yeah, pretty much allied losses this time, really. We only lose one aircraft, so that's very good news. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual situation over here. So, obviously, he's aware of this. I mean, the fact is, it's like, depending on the situation, we can see he's got aircraft over here. Ten bombers. Interesting. There's a troop transport over there. Interesting. Now, I don't know where that's coming or going. Moving east. So that's interesting, then. It looks as if he's reinforcing this area here. Okay. Right. Another attack, I think, they will hurt more than us, and 100% sure they will break with one more attack like that. I mean, this is it. We'll have better rods as well. I mean, uh, we look at this. It's jungle rough. They got level... Well, they had level 3 fortifications, and yeah, that was... That was pretty rough for them. Amagiri moving out there. No... She's undetected so far, very good. Yep, I'm uh, still recording here at the moment, so what I'll do then is upload this shortly. Hello there, Natch. Interesting. Okay. Well, I-10 looks as though she spotted three cargo ships over here, moving northwest. That's interesting. It's a shame that uh, the mayor didn't fall this time, but the fact is I couldn't, like, do anything here. It might be potential... I don't know. I think we can use this submarine to move there. Moving northwest, northwest. That's interesting. Is he moving something to, like, Lord Howe? It's unknown, really. I'll destroy minesweepers are still loading here. Same pending. We have 12 troops on board. That's all I really need. If I need... If I've got some infantry on board here, we're fine. Support, that's unfortunate. Yeah, just support there as well. That's un unfair. Hello there, Cola. Um, yeah, I can imagine he's probably not expecting that. I mean, it's one of these things like, what the hell could he do about it? So you are right about one. Right, we are aware of aircraft over here. Okay. Um, it's a shame about uh, that we don't have those uh, destroyed minesweepers moving us yet. I don't know, that must be just some sort of con uh, convoy between New Zealand and Australia, perhaps. Or he might be moving something here. It's interesting. Okay. Right on. Yeah, so the Kidapatai was intercepted. I do wonder if that actually affected our uh, ability to strike out here. One ship sighted over there. Hmm. That can't be right, can it? Can it? No, that can't be right. Surely not. I don't think the Australians... Um that can't be right. That must be misidentification. That's got to be... It's got to be a large tanker or... He can't have a CVE. Where the hell would the CVE come from? I mean, like, would it be British? But then why would there be one here? That, that can't be right. It just can't be right. Yeah, I found that one. It might be a... Um... 
an AV actually. It could be misidentified as like an AV and an aircraft tender that's been misidentified. That makes sense. That's very interesting though. That's look yeah, that's definitely driven to Port Moresby. Now he's not aware. Yeah, he's definitely aware of this, but the fact is, it's like, I can just move out of here, and we can still keep on hitting here. Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm thinking. It's one of these. If he had a... He, he can't. It's it's absolutely 100% not a carrier. It's probably a misidentified aircraft tender. Okay, let's see. Right, doesn't look like he's aware of our movements over here, so that's very good news. Very, very good news. Now, uh, I had been made aware that supposedly Ambon does have quite the defensive guns, uh, well, fortifications there, naval guns, whatever you want to call it, uh, coastal fortifications. So we might, I think we'll be looking at just uh, concentrating our efforts over here to Celebus, uh, which is fine, I, I don't mind about that. We'll run reconnaissance in the area and really get an idea of the situation there. Yeah, yeah, this is it. So, I mean... <laughs> Uh, Hermes might be considered a, uh, like, carrier, but, yeah, hmm, maybe. Okay, let's take a look over here, then. So, we have the 143rd, we have the Imperial Guards. Right, that's good. So, we're going to be waiting for another three divisions to arrive in Malaya. We did make the decision to move the 48th, the 21st, and the 38th. Ah, hello. Okay, so he's moving this force over here. It's interesting. I might be better off just waiting in this position here, actually. It is a little precarious there. Hmm, it's a decent position. Uh, I don't know. It's a very odd one there. Technically, I'm not on the road there, so I might want to actually move on to the road as such. But I don't know. He might not even be aware of that force. He's definitely moving over here to reinforce the city of Luchao, it seems. Yeah, 73,000 men, as far as we can tell, moving up that way. What is the airfield over here? So, 73. Yep, that unit's moving out there. What are we looking at here with the Mixed Brigade? Yep, they'd arrive next turn. Reinforcements will be making their way down here. Okay. The 48th Division has begun her movement out this way. That's superb. Yeah, so it'll take a few days and I think it'll be about a week or two weeks before we can gather the required amount of divisions. Uh, it's one of these things, it's like we're on January 23rd now, I think we've got a fair bit of time here. I don't mind that. Yeah, he's running quite a lot of aircraft out of Cebu. He's moved in some aircraft over here then to Bataan, that's interesting. And what's our progress over here to Bataan? Uh, 14, yeah, it's taken a bloody long time, isn't it? Okay. I don't know why the movement was cancelled there previously, it must have been me just messing something up. Okay. Two patrol boats over there. The good news is we didn't see any attacks on our economics uh, this turn on the economy over here, really. Any good. We'll take a look at the ship sunk. Uh, so last turn. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Uh, it's not listing the oiler, but I can imagine it's worth a lot. Yeah, British motorist over here. A Federal Type E class tanker. We're looking at... Uh, that's that's a lot of capacity there. That's a lot of capacity. I think, uh, I think the Jedi are going to be feeling that one. Yeah, these bloody corvettes are a pain in the arse. Uh, they could have been a pain, but the thing is, um, it's going to be an interesting one. I think it's going to be intriguing. I mean, the thing is here now. We're aware of ships here. I don't know how many he has. We did see many more here. They might have actually pulled out. And we do see a ship over here. I mean, this is a single troop transport on its own. So what I could potentially do here is just rather marvellous. Like, for example, we've had, uh, we have our bombers over this area as well now. So that's very good news. Okay, we do have our forces over here, which is excellent as well, so I think things are coming together. I think once we get the fuel into the right areas, then we'll be looking good here. Uh, can your ships run out of ammunition? Yep, they absolutely can their MHV. It's a great question, by the way. Ah, thank you very much, Rochi. Really appreciate it. Right then, MHV. I'm just going to call you MHV because it's a bit easier. Right, okay, so for example, you do ask a question like, can your ships run out of ammunition? And yes, they absolutely can. Let me see, where's the Mutsu? Okay, so we have the Mutsu over here. So the Mutsu, for example, she's armed with the uh, 40 centimeter guns over here, the 45, three YTs. Now you can take a look over here, that she got ammunition. Now this is really where the game becomes interesting, because we did actually have an engagement uh, not too long ago. What would you guys say, about a week or two weeks ago at this point here? Uh, we had an engagement just around about, was it around about here? Somewhere around about this area over here. Uh, we did have an engagement uh, with some uh, an American 
heavy cruiser and some Australian heavy cruisers. Uh, two light cruisers and I think it was like two or three destroyers. Now, the, uh, over the course of that battle, like basically every ship expand, well, expended uh, the main armaments ammunition. So the issue is it's like, for example, the Mutsu, obviously the Nagato class. She has very large guns and therefore requires very extensive infrastructure to rearm. So for example, these big guns can't be just rearmed anywhere. You have to have actual infrastructure to do that. The only place in the South Pacific that I can rearm the Nagato class is at our base here at Truck. So we go over here, you can see our rearm level. Uh, now I'd have to take a look at the manual. Uh, yeah, and much of these secondary armaments as well, yeah. It really was just a case of just throwing everything including the kitchen sink at the enemy ships. We did manage to sink a destroyer in a light cruiser, I think. Um, damaged potentially his heavy cruisers, but we've not seen hard no well, hide no tail of them for a while. But yeah, as you can see here, we do have 4750 rearm level. Now each gun has a uh, associated level of port and naval support that you need to actually rearm it. So over here we do have 810 naval support and we do have a size 6 port which is still building up over here. So I can rearm, I, can, I think I could rearm the Yamato as well over here once we do have her. Uh, Moonlight is increasing to 39%, okay. So submarines will become more uh, useful. Speaking of submarines, actually we'll go ahead and check on the status of the I-23. I won, I... Okay, she's over... Where the hell is she? Did she go down? She can't have gone down. She's not been listed as going down, so... Right. Active ships. Is it I-22? I-23, though? Can't be I-23, surely. Which one was it? Yeah, you're more than welcome. The game is really quite intricate as well. So, for example, we do have, over here at Rabal, we do have a squadron of G3M2s over here, our naval bombers. Now, these naval bombers, for example, like, uh, they are able to obviously carry the 18-inch Type 91 torpedo, uh, but at the moment, they're using a reduced load of the 250 kilogram general purpose bomb, uh, purpose bomb, so obviously two of those. The thing is, though, to actually use the torpedoes, you need to have a air flotilla headquarters. So, for example, over here at Truck, we do have the 11th Air Fleet over here. Now, the 11th Air Fleet headquarters does have about 100 torpedoes over here. Uh, we've set that to basically automatically refill that to 100 torpedoes. So, the thing is, I've got to have that headquarters down there. I can't remember if there's a radius when it comes to the actual torpedo range. Uh, but it's something like that. Out here in the Pacific is quite difficult. It might as well be, like, on the base. But, yeah. If we'd have had that here, then I would have been able to use torpedoes. Okay, you sunk one Clemson and Node C class. Yeah, it was a Leander or something. Oh, it says that you sunk the Leander. Yeah, it listed as a Leander, but I think it was a different name, wasn't it? Okay. Right, um, let's go ahead and check out the combat report. I'm sure it was the I was the I twenty two or I twenty three or something like that. Yeah, so you're gonna be aware of the Kaga, Hiru, Akagi, Chitose, Kadeshima, Tone, yeah. This doesn't particularly matter. I mean, uh I think we sank these, but I can't remember exactly. But the beauty of this is he's going to be completely aware of one half of the Kitipatai. And the question that's going to be on his mind here is, Oh wow, yeah, we found the Kitipatai. Wait a minute, where's the other carriers? Where the hell are the other carriers? Where the hell is the other half of the Kitipatai? And that's going to cause him, uh, that's going to cause like alarm bells. He's going to be like, woo, woo, it, it, it's going to be bad. It's going to, it's going to be very interesting because that is going to provoke a lot of reaction here. And it's going to be unpredictable as to how that reaction is actually going to play out here. Because, frankly, he might think, right, okay, the Kitabutai, at least the half of the Kitabutai, is off the coast at uh, Townsville. Where the hell are the other elements of the Kitabutai? Bear in mind that each element of the Kitabutai here has around about 200 aircraft. There's a, there's a small nation's air force floating around there somewhere. Oh, is the I-26 okay? Okay, so it might have actually been worse than, uh, than it well, looked worse than it really was, uh, I-26. Okay, so she did receive some fair damage there. Okay. Whereabouts is she? I-26. There she is. Okay, well, she's... Yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll have her return to Truck to undergo repairs. But that's very good there. I think we'll go off lightly. Um, I might pull back these submarines from Johnston. I think it's one of these things, as uh, Infinite said earlier on, we are sort of pushing our look. Okay. So we're going to return, but I'm going to take a safer path. There we go. Uh, normal threat threshold. Right, there we go. Yeah, so he does have a heavy cruiser over here, it seems. Now, I might make a decision as to whether to pull back all these forces here. And here we go, we have our forces out at Midway. The H6K4s are operational over here. 
That's excellent. Okay, so... That's good then, so Sabrina's okay. Our Gallus and Savai are still chilling out there. They've been there for quite some time now. Right, what do we spot? So we spotted those guys down there. Our submarines over here, the I-172 and the I-173, are undetected as far as we're aware at the moment. Amagiri is making her progress down to Rural Island. So we might be looking at about two, three days, about, something like that. About three, four days for the round, well, for the trip there. And another three, four days for the trip back. But if I can actually snag Rural Island, that's going to be good. Now, I really hope that there's actually some troops on board here. Oh, thank god. Yeah, we've got some SLF squads, we've got some SLF uh, HMG squads there. It's just a couple men, but if it's going to be useful to seize Royal Island, because I can use that, I can use that to base float planes here, which is excellent. It's going to be seen as a very, very aggressive move, so I'm going to be very excited about that. Okay, but this is interesting. We're seeing a lot of movement. I do think moving north was the right move. I mean, I don't know what we might have spotted down south, but I think it looks as if we caught him in an un... Uh, well, unsuspected, really. Well, napping, I suppose you could say. So it, it really does leave him in a difficult position here. Because it's like, as far as it goes, like, he knows I know these ships are here, and he knows I have the capability to dig these ships out of these ports if I so wish to do so. Uh, I don't think you can hold Norfolk Island for more than a month once you take it. It depends, really. I mean, if it, if it goes for it, then it's using, uh, spending resources that uh, might have been better, better used elsewhere. Uh, but the issue is, it's like for a month, in a month's time, things are going to be radically different. I will have an air, head, well, an air flight to the headquarters established down here at New Mayor. And the distance from New Mayor to Norfolk is 10 hexes. So, for example, if I have a naval bomber squadron there, it's going to be hell for him. It's going to be absolute hell moving in this area. And the beauty is, if I can actually get some float planes established over here, our submarines are going to become far more effective. Uh, never mind Norfolk, Roe Island is really going to be that make or break for her. So that is excellent. Right. Now, initially I was going to be uploading this as just the um, first part, actually. Now that I think about it, I'm going on longer here, aren't I? So, uh, I think I'll just upload the reload. Well, the upload. That's just like part one. Hello there, Talon. How you doing there, my friend? I mean, I've been out all day today. I mean, I originally was... I didn't expect to get the turn today, but I've uh, been out today. Uh, managed to pick up some 15mm uh, Soviet forces, so that's really cool. Uh, Jesus, I got... Um, so I picked up three... I mean, this was from a second-hand seller. I picked up three T-34s, uh, four KV-1s, two T-35s, um, two T-26s from the... Plus, I don't know, from this random, like, Polish or Russian company, and then, like, another three... T26s, a box of about 50 odd infantry, another box of about maybe about 50 odd infantry, so I don't know, maybe about 100 or so Soviets and a good number of vehicles there. Damn, you got some strong arms. <laughs> oh my god, damn it, that's... Okay, you got me there. Oh, that's a good one, actually. I'll give you that one. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe about a... Something in the re I don't know, it might be about a platoon to two platoons worth of uh, British airborne forces at 15mm, so that's quite cool. And there was this gigantic box of 6mm World War II forces, and it, oh. I mean, I, I picked up this bag, and this little bag is like 20 little stugs, something like that, and it was like, oh, they look adorable. 6mm stugs look amazing. So yeah, I'm going to be uh, putting that onto the uh, second channel, so obviously you'll see some new content on Ostfront as well, so that's going to be awesome. Okay. So I'm fangirling that a bit. I'm going to start painting, I think, tomorrow or something. Okay. So the situation here is improving. I think it's a very interesting situation. But I think we really have struck a blow here. I mean, the fact is... Um, we did detect about seven ships... Well, supposedly, last turn. So that is interesting. Now, it is showing one ship in port over here. Hmm... Let's go for our operations report, then. Okay. Yeah, the tanker British Destiny is hit. British Destiny hit there as well. And we will be pushing onto board Moresby within a, about a week, really. Right. It's interesting when it says reported hit. I don't know really what sort of damage that might actually inflict. Hard to know, really. Uh, what detection level is on each portion? Uh, the first portion that was obviously intercepted by the ships there is at 10 out of 10. 
Uh, the second portion of the Kidipatai, this portion over here, is undetected. She's actually covered by thunderstorms over here, which is excellent. Yeah, thunderstorms over there, clear over here. Uh, hello there, LN Devout. Good to have you, my friend, as always. Welcome aboard. Yep, so the weather is interesting. I mean, this, ah, that's gonna be great. We did see the Allied cruisers somewhere around about this area here. He may, he may still be in this area. He's still gonna be in this area. Uh, when are the carriers gonna be upgraded? Uh, we'll take a look, actually. It's gonna be the Chicago, uh, Chicago class that's gonna be upgraded first. I don't think Chicago class is in that one. Uh, there we go, Chicago and Zukaku. Okay, so the uh, Shikakus will be upgraded about midway through the year. We actually ganged them the Type 21 radar. But yeah, this is it. Like, how are we going to do this then? So, it's going to be about, ooh, uh, five-ish months before the Kidibutai is upgraded. At least some elements of the Kidibutai is upgraded. Uh, so we'll be trying to carry out incremental repairs as best we can, really. The carriers are going to be interesting. Let's take a look. Um, let's see. I'm not- I don't think I've seen any major damage. Yeah, no major damage here. Two major damage there, but that's two engine major damage, which isn't too bad. I mean, he- sorry about that, uh, yeah, we're lower torpedoes, unfortunately. Hero is 17,000 tons, so I can have her repaired at some decent, um, shipyard. It doesn't have to be one in particularly in Japan, for example. Okay, the Akagi, yeah. So a lot of these carriers over here, then, it's only really the major damage I can't repair as such. I need a shipyard for that, so Solru needs some shipyard repairs. Shokaku is okay. Zuikaku, one major damage, but we can live with that. We can live with that. It's just going to be an interesting one, really. We are going to have to make some decisions. It might be, I think I might have to rewatch the last episode just to figure out, like, what the previous positions were. But it is going to be intriguing. Now, as far as it goes for Numea, I think we'll probably make the decision to attack again. I think that, uh, that was a good result there. I'm just happy that we have the turn back. So that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, supplies looking better than Rabal, building that back up. Uh, look at that damage, yeah. So, 13 damage to the port there. So that's good then, the airfield's fully operational. I can't remember exactly what the damage was beforehand, actually. But we're looking good there, looking very good. We do spot a submarine over here. What is the, uh... I think it'll be ocean shallow, actually. Uh, doesn't the repair ship a truck repair up to five major damage? Uh, I think you have to actually... Oh, the re it might do, actually. I'm not entirely sure how it works with those guys, to be honest. I'll have to read up on the actual, um manual again actually in regards to repairing manual uh, sorry major damage i mean we have been able to uh, speed up the repairs of the negato yep uh actually let's see here did i i might have forgot to carry out that change um yeah so if we go here hmm i'm looking at 52 days now I think, um, I think it might be better to potentially go to pier side, as that'll be 34 days, it seems. So we'll be looking at supposedly just over a month first to repair the Nagato. If I go pier side here, I don't know if that is going to repair the major damage, though. Uh, I'm, I'm, no, actually, I don't think they have any major damage. I'm going to cancel the changes for the moment. I don't think they have any major damage, so I think PSI is probably the better option, actually. I'll double-check that one in the future. I think Infinite mentioned something to me about, like, reducing the repair time. Okay, so expanding the port there. How are we going with the airfield to Luganville? Ah, yeah, we'll have that next turn. So from next turn, we'll have a size 2 airfield at Luganville, which is excellent. That means I can actually build, uh, well, I, I can actually build up my air presence in this area, so I can actually establish some naval bombers here, which is excellent. So we know there's ships over here, uh, aircraft over here as well. Well, we are completely changing our tactics down here in the South Pacific as far as it goes, really. So it's going to be intriguing time to come yet. And we're going to be making a very bold move over here in the Dutch East Indies. We're really, he's going to definitely find the fact that we are going to be up, upgrading the situation. Well, the, the attention here given to Dutch, well, to the Dutch East Indies. What is the supply of Luganville? It's about seven, well, just shy of 7,000 tons. 
Uh, we can have a limit there of 1700, so that's okay. So 6,785 here at the moment. Uh, I've still got some supplies I'm loading over here, Ben, so it looks like we're quite good. Okay. I think I have my patrol boat. Yeah, my uh, patrol boat's heading over here, so uh, Kyo, uh, Kyo, Maru, or Kyo Maru is moving to Funafuti, so that's very good. Uh, this patrol boat doesn't look like it's been detected, so that's interesting. Nor these here, okay. Right, that's intriguing then. I wonder if it's potentially due uh, to the weather over here. Let's take a look. No, okay. You need more supply there to fly bombers. I think you need six times required to fly from size two with torpedoes. Well, we should have about uh, just, I don't know, what will we have here? So in the base itself, we have uh, 6,785. We're offloading 3,700, uh, sorry, 3,073 supply. Okay, so we'll have, yeah, a fair odd amount there. Maybe just shy of 10,000, something around that. I can bring in additional supply. We'll see what the situation is there. I mean, there's obviously supply down here in New Caledonia, so if needs be, I can always take some supply from New Caledonia to do that. But that's fine. Okay, so the actual operation support isn't... Not terribly much happening. Yeah, Allied fighter bombs of a Clark, so he's running some sort of like combat patrol there, or some sort of uh, reconnaissance perhaps. Hmm. Motion to call the offensive in the Dutch East Indies Operation Shulip. <laughs> that sounds pretty awesome. And plus, you need a supply available at the base for air fuel for plus, you need uh, two times. Okay. Well, I suppose we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I can get more supply down there, but I think, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Even if they can't use torpedoes, that's fine. I don't particularly mind. Ah, see you later there, MHB. Thank you very much for coming by. Uh, yep, so if you guys aren't aware, I'm, I don't know how you'd not be aware, but uh, do go ahead and check out Military History Visualized channel there. I'm sure he'll give me a shout out, please. Cross finger. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen, but thank you very much, man. It's great to have you. You really should get one of Pacific. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be good. But I like that name, Operation Tulip. That sounds pretty cool. I like that. So he's retaken uh, Zombo Anchor, but that, yeah, that's no bother there. Really no bother. Oh, we did have a little bit of light industry there. I should check that to see how it looked. Okay. Yeah, that fatigue's not uh, exactly great. We're moving up over here. In time, Mindanao will fall anyway, so that's fine. We're moving on the tan soon enough. Um, <laughs> I aim to please. Yeah, I, I've been told about that one. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like it's pulled out without falls. So let's take a look then. So for example, over here then, let's see. Uh, 133 bombers are ready. That's interesting. What happened with that squadron? Maintenance, perhaps? Yeah, maintenance. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm waiting for my... Engineers to arrive over here. So it looks like some of them have arrived here, which is excellent. Okay. Well, that's good news. So if we take a look over here, then. So the base... Whoops. Not bad base. This base. At Hankow. We're looking at 120 aviation support here. That's fine. Uh, so once, uh, yes, we'll tell these forces obviously then to uh, get their asses into gear. And there we go. 34th Division. Looks like they just arrived as well, actually. Uh, the big Chinese force we faced last term seems to be, yeah, it look, well, he's moving here. I mean, the thing is, it's like, if he, <laughs> he's not going to make it. And if he makes it there, he's going to be in for a shock. Yep, he'll be greeted by the 40th Division. There's a few other forces over here. 78th has just gone in here. Oh, cheers very much for that. I'll take a look at that in just a moment now. Yep, so there's a lot of artillery there, but I'm going to move in across another division as well. So I could bring together a, uh, a fair force. And the thing is, it's like, obviously, if we have a... Uh, Holy shit, he actually did give me a shout out. Oh, well, that's a nice guy. I'll get all tingly here. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, just when you get a chance, yeah. Uh, this is a benefit of having a phone, so that's okay. Right. Yeah, okay, so, uh, infinite say, situation around, uh, the group headed northwest between, uh, uh, can, what's NG? <laughs> uh, north, perhaps? Yeah, uh, Norfolk and Lord Howe is the reason you operate Glen subs with others around them. Yeah, well, this is it. I mean, the beauty, uh, beautiful thing is, it's like, uh, we'll get some float planes established there, which is gonna be awesome. So that's gonna be excellent. Okay. I think overall things are going well. I think we've had a good time there. Uh, we did take some damage to our submarines, but as far as it goes, I think things are excellent here. Uh, starting to feel the optimism. I mean, this is it. It's like in the earlier turns, we did have a down phase for a while. But I think the optimism really is growing here for the Empire. Can we get a round of Kidapatai? Sorry, Kidapatai? Can we get a, a round of Tenno Haikai? Uh, fucking hell. Tenno Haikai Bansai. <laughs> it's been a long day, hasn't it? Oh, God. I've got the kitty battalion on the brain here. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, this is it. So, we're looking at the fall of New Caledonia there, really, we've been... I'm gonna... I mean, this is it. It's like... Two days, maybe? One day? Two days? It depends on the situation. But it was encouraging, as Ford did point out earlier, the fact that none of our vehicles had even been damaged nor destroyed. That is very strong there. The thing is, it's like, that's gonna really augment our forces. I'd really love to get an idea of what the intricacy of the battle would look like here. I tell you what, guys, I've got a whole bag of, like, 1945 Japanese. I've got a, like, 15mm, guys. I've, I've got to get them built up and, like, painted and stuff like that. So it'd be freaking awesome to have some Japanese. That'd be cool. Okay. Yeah, so we've got our forces over here. That's good. And it was a patrol boat who was attempted to hit there. Now, these guys are on fast transport, aren't they? Yeah, okay, so they are moving an additional supply here. But we can see that this works. It's absolutely awesome. Really good. Really nice there. Okay. Yeah, and the Philippines, uh, Philippines is looking good there. Uh, yep, there's that force I was speaking about earlier on. Yep, it looks as if he's definitely moving in more and more tankers over here. Sorry, tankers. Uh, cargo ships over here, which is awesome. The end to Operation No should happen tomorrow. No reason those forces should be able to hold out against another attack. And we'll take a look at the actual men here. Let's take a look at them, shall we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's looking good. Yep, okay, this is it. Like, he's going to read these numbers and... Uh, yeah, okay. It looks like five of them potentially damaged there. But that... I'm not so sure uh, what might have caused that. It might have been in the battle, but it, it didn't list them as damaged... So it looks like they're uh, disabled for the time being, but it's interesting because it didn't say in the battle that they were disabled, so I, I, do, I do wonder about that one. They did very well. They did very well. That's a strong, strong unit. The artillery is looking pretty good there. I mean, the fact is the water's got involved over here, so that's excellent. Had we had more planning for our forces here, we would have done even better, I'd imagine. But we didn't take any negatives, and yeah, we're looking awesome here. I might see if I can find some better commanders as well to make sure, but yeah. Fairly light losses. Naval Guard, few losses there. Uh, this section of Naval Guard, no losses as such, just a little bit to the support there. Then again, it's a little bit larger units anyway. Uh, it's one of these regiments, yeah. It's really the 144th Regiment that is leading the attack over here at Numea. Well, so that's part of the 55th Division. So once New Caledonia has fallen and the end of Operation No is considered a success, We've, it's been a hell of a ride over here, hasn't it? It's been a hell of a ride. <laughs> Lone Bear, Northfield, Stratford. How you doing there, my friend? Good to have you on board there. <laughs> oh, support the Allies. Oof. Down with the Allies here. It's over the Japanese Empire, really. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at our intelligence report, and let's see if we support anything. Suva, as we're aware of. 92, 49, 85, 39, Wellington, Merrick, and Batan. Batan's interesting. Merrick... Is Merrick Borneo? I can't remember exactly what it is. Merrick, Merrick, Merrick. It rings a bell, Merrick. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I can't remember exactly where Merrick is now. It rings a bell. I, I feel like I know where it is. I feel like I've looked at it before, but I can't remember exactly where Merrick is. We'll see about that. Right, are you finally done? Ah, oh, 
God, this has been a pain. You haven't got any troops on board, so that's fine. Okay, what I'm going to do here then, disband you for the time being. Right, and let's go with Amphibious, I guess. You can't dog you to size, unfortunately. Okay, non combat mode. We'll load you up, I can't take you all, but that's fine. Load troops only, verified load, except load. Put the patrol boats in there. Say, they are well, valuable units. I'm gonna have a lot of these patrol boats sent out. To be honest, what I'm gonna do here then, let's see. I mean, um, hmm. ASW Task Force. I'm gonna take these three over here. They're fairly low on endurance, but I'll have them head into Saigon, take some fuel in Saigon. Then I'll have them head down into uh, Sarawak, basically to Borneo. We'll use them as our like, tanker escorts, to be honest, and just obviously patrol these waters, really. Okay. We do have a lot to do in the next episode, so it's going to be awesome. But things are going well. I just have some engineer vehicles here, but 531 engineers is impressive. The fact is, as well, the uh, actual army commands are now targeted over to Changsha as well, which is going to help us out. <laughs> I think I heard something about Hex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, these divisions will be going soon. So we're looking at one to two days, and then they'll be uh, on their way down south, which is excellent. Okay. See, I might as well have you move over there to Wu Chang, considering the fact that you're already on the rails. Are you packing up? Thirty-four. It's a fairly yeah. It's the division that was quite hurt, isn't it? But then again, it could still be handy. It's still got well, uh, hmm. I cancel that move. I can't remember exactly what I said about that one. In all honesty, actually, I think I said I might keep them there. I can't remember. I really can't remember what I said about that. It's not much stronger than a mixed brigade here at the moment. Hmm. Okay. The engineers are moving up over here, so it'll be a couple days before they arrive. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the map. So let's see here then. So show all units. We'll go with enemy units. We'll go with uh, task forces. Right. So that is a submarine over here then. Moving east. Over here by Johnson. Aware of that. I'm not spotting anything in this area over here, which is good. Not even any submarines either. Submarine there. But this is interesting. That is a very interesting one there. I think what we'll do then is uh, this section of the Kidapatai is going to move on over here. And that is going to be great. And the thing is, it's like we are going to be well within range of Port Moresby. And just... And just <sighs> I might turn the ranges up over here then. Just in the meantime, I mean, we will. I think what I'm going to do here then is um, go ahead and potentially assign, potentially a. I, I might have the A5 and fours like, maybe run night combat air patrol. I'm not entirely sure here. It could be quite handy just to try and do that, just to make sure that, uh, just on the off chance, that he might. I don't know. I don't know. It like, it's a difficult one. We know there's bombers over here, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, will you reinforce the unit south of uh, Changsha? That's a good question there. See, at the moment, I did previously expect him to continue to march across the river here, and he's playing into our hands as such. Now, it's been beaten up. I think what I need to do here, then, is... Um, I could hold position. It's going to take him some time to arrive here. I don't know. It's an interesting one, really. I can spare men over here. I can spare them. We will have additional forces coming. So, I don't know. It might be worthwhile to potentially spare one division. Because what we could do here, then, maybe two divisions, perhaps. What I could do is I could have the 104th. I can regret not having the 104th move over here now. But that, that's the nature of war, isn't it? So I can actually move them over here. And we can cut this force off. We'll cut it off and then, yeah, he's going to be really buggered. 
Um, yeah, we can reform the 104th Division as well, which is fantastic. Okay, we're looking good now. Right. Let's see if I can get them. Same operations mode. Hmm. It might have a slightly different table of equipment or something of that nature. Or it might be about next turn. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look there. So set everybody, make sure everybody's set to Hang Yang as their target. Yep, yeah, okay. That, right, well, it might be due to the fact that they're already moving. So yeah, we've still got some forces that are moving, so that's okay. I'll, I'll keep them moving. At the end of the day, it'd be a good idea. So set the ball to follow. Right on. Okay. Hello there, Major. How you doing there, my friend? I'll be on our Mariana's game soon enough, actually. So you want that? Uh, so you want that pilot who aren't trained to start and land on CV to do night operations? <laughs> but the thing is, it's like I could see. This is it. It's like on the off chance that he does throw out a bomber raid. I don't know, it's one of these, really. He has ten bombers. I'd, I could probably... I think of all things, that it's like I'll probably have, like, an A4, M4... Well, so A5M4 squadron run the night combat combat air patrol. Just on the off chance. But I think what we'll do, then, is we'll probably pull back over here. I don't know, really. Do we stay in position here, or...? Because I might be inviting disaster there. I could head over here, or we could even head up this way. It's hard to say, really. We don't have that much information about the area. We know the light cruisers are still at large. It might be better to potentially head out over this way, so still within range of this general area. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look at the combat reports, and shall we? Night attacks against ships are a waste of time before radar arrives. Okay, well, that's that's encouraging, man. Always move your CVs, yeah. I mean, this is it. But that's that's encouraging, Ben. So if we... Yeah, okay, that works for me. That works for me. Okay. I think we dealt uh, with most of the AMs and AVs as well, actually. Right. That was good. I mean, the fact that we actually took out a tanker over here... And we more than likely did destroy a oiler as well, so that's very good news. Alright, let's see. So the pickles. I don't know what class the pickles would be. Um, hmm. Could somebody maybe uh, could somebody Google like what what class of oiler that is? Or if somebody knows that'd be awesome, and then at least I could get some information there. I mean, this is it. Uh, we did hear something that had sunk as well, so I don't know. That'd be interesting. Should tell you. Well, the thing is, it's like it didn't actually go down, so I don't think it's shown me as like uh, sunk as such. Like we hit. Let's see. So it's listing the British motorist, but it isn't listing the oiler there because I don't. I don't know. We heard. We didn't see it sink in that battle, but we heard a sinking noise afterwards. Then uh, I think it's a big fleet oiler. I mean, this is it. It's like. Phew, Where's it going to go? I mean, if it hasn't gone down, where's it going to go? That'd be interesting. I think what we'll do then is we'll probably pull back with the Kidapatai and just, I think, maybe another day in this area. The beauty is it's like we've got the second attachment to the Kidapatai over here and he's he's not aware of that. So that's great. We see the troop transport over here. So what I can... And this is it, Jesus. It's like if we move up over here, as we will do, we can potentially take out the ship before it can even unload anything. It's a Kanawa... Class, okay. Ooh. That's cool, then. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. So, Kanawa. Right, allied ships. That's very good, then. Right, Kanawa. So, I'm going to assume it's this guy over here. Yeah, okay. Very nice capacity there. And this is it. She's actually armed with 5-inch guns. But the fact is, it's like that's an oiler that's been taken out there. So that's going to hurt him. I don't know how many oilers the US has 
or how many Oilers the Allies have at really any point in this uh, early phase of the war. Uh, but that's going to hurt. But the fact is, it's like, where was, was that oil coming? It must have been coming from the Dutch East Indies over to here, but it's interesting, actually. I think we have struck a blow there. I think that is going to be one of those things that do hurt. I think this is it. I think he genuinely expected us to hit Brisbane and Sydney, and I think we really were considering that, but uh, I'm glad that we didn't. I'm glad that we didn't. I think we have struck a nice chord over here, so that's good. The fact is he's going to be completely aware of this section of the Kidipa type, but that's okay. We'll pull out. Obviously still within range strike here, but he's unaware of this section of the Kidipa type, so we'll see what happens there. It may spur movement elsewhere, but it might still... He probably might still hold back because it's like if he's not aware of the other half of the Kidipatai, he's, he's going to be wondering. I think he's going to be worrying about where the other half of the Kidipatai is going to be. Because he's not seen them for a few days, he might think that they're over there. Uh, the Allies lack AOs and tank as well, that's good then. I mean, we sank one and we hit the oiler there. So, I mean, they were fairly big as well, so that's good news. Hit some to destroy, well, escorts as well. I think this is excellent. I think this is going to help us to clear up the way around here. Once we move into this area as well, clear whatever the hell that is. I mean, that is either... I'm going to say that's moving reinforcements in, so that's going to be excellent. I'm very excited here. I mean, depending on the situation, I'm, I don't know. We might move them. I think we'll have them land, yeah. We're going to have them land at Buna. We'll go like that. We'll get tankers moving fuel down this way. I think we're going to score quite a bit there. I think we'll score a nice bit. We did have some bloody battles. I mean, new mayor... I think New Mayor will fall then after the next battle. I think they will do. The supply situation is excellent. And if it is as uh, Infinite Warriors that we don't have enough supply here to use uh, torpedoes, then we can get some more supply in over here. Luckily, we do still have some more here. So what I might do, I mean, yeah, it's another seven, just shy of 8,000 tons of supply. So I could quite easily cancel that supply and load in there and move it up over this way. That works for me. We do have to somewhat worry about the... Uh, mine. So what I might do is have the patrol boat actually patrol this area then, perhaps. But overall, very good. So, I'm going to call the stream to an end here for tonight. It is a little bit late. I did spend all day out as well, so unfortunately uh, not as much time as I would have liked. Uh, but it's been awesome. It's been really great to actually get the turn out here. So like I say, a big thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it thoroughly, and I hope to see you again in the future. Uh, do go ahead and join the Discord chat on, uh, well, obviously my Discord, on Voices from the Ostrunt, as we'll be able to discuss the game and discuss the turn. If you guys would like to join the Allied chat, please go ahead and join the Discord and type in the general chat, Allied Supporter. Or if you want to go in the neutral chat, where you can actually see both chats, but you can't interact with them, but you can discuss with other observers, type Observer, please. And if you'd like to join the mighty, mighty Imperial Japanese channel of the Chrysanthemum Order, then go ahead and type in Imperial Japanese Supporter. And we'll be able to have discussions there. It's quite lively, actually. It's really awesome. We do discuss quite a lot. And we do decide on tactics and really our grand strategy. So I'd like to say a big thank you once again. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And it's been cool to have you as always. If you have enjoyed this, please do consider supporting the channel by following myself on YouTube and Twitch at XTRG. And if you'd like to support the channel, please do become a patron today. It really helps me out. And until next time, I think we should be able to get the next stream probably tomorrow. But yeah, until that time. Thank you and good night, guys. Have a great one. See you soon.